up, YouTube Culture Dog Sam Hatchback, with another video, another Blu ray spotlight video. And I've been tearing through the Mad Max films. I did a marathon after seeing Fury Road the first time and uh, picked up a bunch of titles that I didn't have on Blu ray. And this film in particular, I haven't seen since watching it on cable countless times uh, back in the, uh, the mid 80s. This came out in 85. I saw it theatrically. And I was slightly disappointed, as were a lot of people, but it is Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. And this was a film where, you know, the kind of popularity of Mad Max 2, a.k.a. The Road Warrior, uh, put a lot of pressure on probably George Miller and crew to create a, a bigger and better beast this time around. Um, I mean, you know, George Miller is still the producer, though, even though this is... Um, a more Hollywood feeling film, you know, especially the second half. Uh, the first half, you know, starts off promising with Max, this kind of uh, nomad who's uh, wandered into a place called Barter Town, which is run by Auntie Entity. Again, typical uh, George Miller crazy name, played by Tina Turner. And uh, Max has some interesting interactions with the the populace of this town, and uh, you know, quickly things turn sour for him, and he's you know forced to fight people and in a in a, a dome kind of cage match environment that's pretty much like this first half of the movie is pretty much what inspired burning man in fact now there's like an even section of burning man where they have thunderdome competitions and in which these characters have these bungee harnesses where you could fly around and, and battle one one another um you know the the, the problem with the film is that you have a, a series that's kind of largely based on vehicle action uh in all of the films, except for this one, basically, until the very end. Um, you know, Max's vehicle is has been turned into this desert caravan pulled by animals, and there's not a lot of cool, like, road chase action. And uh, eventually, a truck turns into a train at one point, which, I don't know, I just never thought that really worked. And there's, like, chasing. I love that these kids are like, hey, where are we going to go? It's like... Where, what do you mean, where are we going to go? There's a train track in the middle of this post-apocalyptic wasteland. Like, one, you're going to be lucky it goes on for more than five feet. You're going to go wherever this train track ends. <laughs> like, there's there's nothing to do. There's no left turns to be made. Um, but, yeah, so after the, the Barter Town events, which never really go as far as you'd expect. Like, it sets up a lot of interesting things about the environment, and then it just kind of leaves it all behind quickly, and it's kind of anticlimactic. Max is kind of left to, to to wander in exile in in the wilderness and uh, he quickly encounters these uh, these survivors of a plane crash that are now like young adults or teenagers and sometimes you know, tweens and uh, it quickly turns into a Lord of the Flies meets the Goonies meets uh, Hook even though this came out you know years before Hook but you know that kind of Peter Pan Lost Boys thing and um, oh, man there are times when the score uh, done by um, Maurice Jarre. I just want to reach through the screen and punch that score in the face because it is just so, like, 80 Spielberg sounding. It's just so cloying and, uh, yay, go kids, it, team adventure kids, yeah, whatever. And, uh, yeah, that's where it really kind of starts to fall apart for me. I mean, there's some great, um, you know, f scenes within... Uh, the campground of the kids, uh, and like a lot of George Miller stories, like it's usually positive that they have to go back to where you came from at some point, so they decide they have to go back to Barter Town. And that does involve a final chase scene in which they try to be bigger and better than the Road Warrior chase scene, but it doesn't work. One, the train stuff doesn't really take off. Uh, Bruce Spence returns, but is a different character than the gyro pilot in Part 2. This time he's uh, a, a, like a plane pilot, and his son is kind of annoying. Um... Yeah, there's just too much kitty stuff going on in here. And Auntie Entity's crew eventually show up in vehicles, but all of the stunts and gags that are played around this train assault are, are just very lighthearted, uh, you know, throwbacks to, like, serial adventure-type films and nothing really dangerous, not like the, the Road Warrior scene. Um, it just seems very, very PG and very... Even though this was PG-13, but... It just seems very aimed at family-friendly for some reason. So, it's a mixed bag. There are some cool elements to it. Uh, it could definitely have used some more uh, road action for sure. But, yeah, it does 
have uh, some cool characters in it, like Master Blaster. But uh, at this time, watching it, the the bits with the kids wasn't as t- that scene part always felt tedious to me, where they just say bitey bye like a thousand times, and they talk funny, and they go look at an airplane fuselage. And it just seemed to dredge and drag along, and uh, it seemed a little bit peppier this time watching it, but no doubt, dude, thanks uh, to the Blu-ray tr- uh, transfer, which you know does look pretty good. This is, again, another release you can get for $5. People are talking about Gateweave destroying the film, and I I was blasting that on a 100-inch screen, and I was not distracted by Gateweave really at all. So, I mean, I guess I could see it a couple times, but... It looked sharp, it looked pretty clear, probably looked better than the theatrical exhibition I saw it in 1985. So, um, it does have uh, DTS HD Master Audio in 5.1, and French and English, uh, uh, French and and Spanish, uh, two different Spanish uh, versions, subtitles, etc. No extras on here to be found at all, so, you know, someday maybe it'll be a special edition. But I do love that they have the original um, artwork included on the cover. So bravo for them for that choice. Definitely tops uh, Road Warrior. Again, if you I forgot to mention in the last review, if you do get Road Warrior, make sure you get the 2013 release, which is when this, this one came out as well, because that's got the better uh, video quality on it. And, uh, yeah, so... I don't definitely don't regret picking it up. It's the best I've ever seen the film look, probably ever since it started. The audio is actually pretty good. There's some good surround envelopment, and it doesn't sound uh, constricted or or, uh, or shrill or anything like that. So, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it, and even though the film itself is, is still a mixed bag for me, and uh, Fury Road definitely made up for that in spades. Thanks for hanging out. Hope you enjoy these films, and uh, if you have them yourself, you yeah. know, Hope, hope you uh, enjoyed these Blu-ray releases, or if you don't have them, maybe it'll uh, give you the uh, kick in the seat to go pick them up for like a couple bucks or something and enjoy them. All right, talk to you guys later. Have fun. Cheers.